Hey, it's Mads, and today I'm going to be showing you how I got from this shiny concept sketch to some custom made guitar picks. So if you want to see how I did it, keep on watching. So I started by just roughing in the sketch in Photoshop based upon the original sketch that I'd done on paper, trying to figure out where all the elements go, but also trying to figure out what elements I wanted to include. This was actually for a gift for a friend of mine who plays guitar and always loses his picks. And me and him have both watched Adventure Time together. He actually kind of got me onto watching in, in it a real capacity. And so I wanted to create something that was really, really special to him. To do so, I really considered the elements that were going into the overall design. So I was going to use Marceline and Simon from Adventure Time because they're his favourites, but I ended up picking Bimo instead because Bimo wouldn't really take too much attention away from the portrait and also Bimo is adorable. In addition to the Adventure Time characters and theme going on, I also included his guitar, I included Dungeons and Dragons dice, and I included my dog Poppy, who is just adorable and needs a feature at any possible moment. And then the guy in the middle, that's him. That's my interpretation of what he would look like in the Adventure Time style. So then you can see I'm just roughing in some colours underneath the sketch to see if I like the composition before I commit to anything and start any line work. So once I'm happy with the composition, I go in with a finer brush and start to really refine that sketch, figuring out exactly what all the shapes are going to look like. Sometimes that means pulling in extra references, especially when I'm using characters that are not my own, like I've pulled in a picture of... Oh golly, Marshall Lee, the Vampire King, I think he is. I've got Bemo there, just making sure that the characters look true to the style and making sure that I get all the elements right. This is really important because if I was just to jump in from that rough sketch into line work, I'd be kind of guessing where all my lines should go as I work, whereas this way I can still keep it a bit rough, but make sure that everything is the right shape. And you can see I'm also adding the little snail, which is always a little Easter egg in every Adventure Time episode. I thought it would be really silly if I didn't include it because he has to be in everything adventure time, right? Then last of all, I'm adding some D&D dice just because I know that it's really important to him and I totally traced it because I don't know the shape of 20-sided dice. So next I imported this sketch into Illustrator. I was just trying out something new because I really struggle getting smooth line art and I thought maybe if I was able to move the lines around in Illustrator, eh, don't do it. I'm sure it's a great method but it didn't work for me. It was really hard and definitely not worth the effort. I actually since the out a better way of doing it but that's besides the point. So I'm just going around every single element of the work and making sure that it all has the black line art that you see on a lot of cartoons including Adventure Time um, using straight lines where I need to like with the guitar. And now I'm sure some artists and just some people in general have noticed something a little off about the guitar. Um, yes it's not sitting on his shoulder at all. I only realized after I'd completely finished. Uh, so let's just pretend he's holding the entire weight with one hand. It's, I don't know, it'd be a lot to balance, but that's fine. You know, it's creative. <laughs> if you weren't aware, I've also done another artwork in the Adventure Time style. I did one as part of my self-portrait series of which the time lapse is already uploaded on my YouTube channel. So I'll leave the link in the description if you want to go check that out. So the next step, I imported the line art back into Photoshop. I know, double handling and then some, but I started coloring it in. So what I've done is I've put it on a layer above and then started filling in the colors below. I've since realized that you can uh, select with the selection tool and then increase that, expand that rather, but I didn't know about that trick so I kind of hand painted every single square, but you know, you live and you learn. And I'm just using the colors from a screen cap from the actual show itself to try and make sure it looks true to the style. Um, and then every now and then I'm just jumping into the liquify tool to move the line work around, uh, like in Bimo's face as you saw. I'm also using different characters for colour references. So I've used almost the exact colours for the snail. I, you know, used Finn for the skin colour and then changed it because it didn't fit. Just laying in a lot of flat colours uh, because Adventure Time doesn't really have any shading. So it was really only just flat colours. And I'm just trying to get everything in and then I'll start to tweak it to make sure that it all looks cohesive and works together as an overall piece. 
For anyone wondering as well, the music in the background is something I composed myself. Kinda. It's not really a strength of mine, but I wanted to try it out, thought it would be fun. And it's inspired by the Adventure Time theme song, which is at the start of every show. And then the song in the closing closing credits, is that what you call it? The credits. So the Come Along With Me, I'm not sure who it's by. Uh, but I used the melody lines of both of those. And then just my ukulele and piano and garage band. <sighs> you know, professional musician stuff. Because I wasn't going to be seeing my friend for his birthday, I decided to also make him a card. So I did use the artwork that I made here and I just shifted it around a bit. So I moved BMO up to the top corner and then I've got him in the middle. And then if you look in the top right hand corner, there's the lich peeking out a window. Super creepy. I thought that fit really well. And then also I kinda custom painted the happy birthday. I used a font I found online, I'll link that below, and then I painted the textures on and made it fit with the sword. So I was really proud of that and I got glitter everywhere, which was not ideal, but I think the end result was cute. You can see in the painting I'm also just adding a glowy effect to the dice, trying to make them look a little bit magical and bring that teal color from Bemo up into the rest of the piece as well. Adding a few more elements of magic and then I just shift the colours around just a little bit to make sure it looks exactly how I want it. Zooming in and out to make sure it's going to look good at the final size because pigs are tiny. And I wanted to make sure that it was going to look good at this big size, say for example on the card and then on the actual final product. I did use Grover Allman to print these and this was the final result. If you like this video, please leave a comment, let me know, that'd be ace, and then like and subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching, have a good one.